All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started here. I'm going to uh, start to quickly attendance. All right, 4877. <clears throat> nice uh, rainy day, nice rainy morning at least. Anyway, <laughs> we'll see what the rest of the time brings, but hope you're snuggled in and uh, ready to work. <laughs> it's kind of those miserable days where you just want to uh, roll back over in bed, don't, don't you? All right, so what we're going to cover is um you know section two three which is uh dealing with it's called from another dimension but it's dealing with two and three dimensional um systems which you guys dealt with before if you think about area and volume of three-dimensional values so it's basic uh, geometry stuff so it's formulas and um it deals with that. So let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at it from the perspective of the book. All right. So here we have from another dimension. <clears throat> it says determine the units of area and volume calculations and then use formulas to calculate area and volume. And then discussing important skills and then simplify expressions. So um, when you're looking at this, you think of some units of measure that apply to area and volume, okay? Length around an object, right? That's that's something. Um, area and volume dealings with um, now and length around an object, right? You you are talking about really the um, perimeter, and that's one dimensional, all right? And when we think of one dimensional, the unit is raised to the first power all right so that's something to think about and then area all right area is two-dimensional it's squared so units squared normally like if i had something like say feet all right um when we deal with feet we say feet, feet squared so that's that's just an idea just one one idea so you have feet squared all right so that's uh, area now when you're dealing with volume let's say it's meters for example it would be meters cubed see so the unit of measure okay is raised to the third power when dealing with volume so this is some of the um you know the things we think about when we deal with area and volume all right now we begin by working with area and volume area is a measure to two you know well it's a measure of side for two-dimensional objects like floors walls and posters all right volume is a measure of size of three dimension objects like beer mugs swimming pools buildings and so on so here we have a two-dimensional uh, figure right here, all right, two-dimensional being that it's only looking at length and width. So we would do is think of this as multiplying four times five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. That would, by multiplying five times four, rather than doing this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. That's a little annoying right there. Just single-handedly counting every single block. Multiplication is an effect to help us, you know, add real quick, right? So we get that involved. So then it says, what length of measure in inches is the correct area for this right here? And we say square inches because it's inches just like if we were dealing with feet it would be square feet so it's square inches so we anytime you're dealing with area it's always that unit being squared and the unit here being inches all right now when it deals with uh length you have the formula 
All right, you have a formula. Area equals length times width. All right, that's a that's a, a critical uh, you know formula that we have for that. Now, with volume, volume is length times width times height. It involves dimensions that are three dimensional. All right, so that's why it's called you know cubic centimeters. So what you do is you multiply one, two, three, four times one, two, three. That would give you this block system right here. All right. So that would be four times three is 12. And then you have two of them. So you have another set of blocks in the back. So it's one centimeter deep on both those as well. So that makes it a cube. So then you have 24 total cubes together. I mean, it's hard to see that behind this block is another block, but it's it's in this row or column, I should say. All right, so we get the idea. So it's cubic centimeters, all right? And the volume is right here, all right? That is the formula for it. And so it is now you have the formula. So identify that M and be able to compute for them. And so it is, if you have this, it says find the area of one figure, all right, and a volume of the other figure. So this is three dimensional, so it's two times two times nine, or four times nine, which is 36. This would be 36, and we would say cubic meters, because we're dealing with volume. Now this one is seven times 2.5. So, 2.5 or 2 times 7 is 14 and half of 7 is 3.5 so 14 plus 3.5 would be 17 and a half so i will go ahead and just put 17 and a half here all right uh yards squared all right now, there's other formulas you need to be concerned about. Such would be not so much this one. This one's square inches again. But the volume of a cylinder. Now, the cylinder has the area of a, uh, of a circle that needs to be concerned. All right. And so we're dealing with the area of a circle. All right. The area of a circle is pi r squared. See, that this is the area. And this part is just this part right here. I, I kind of blocked it off for you. It's, it's embedded inside the formula for the volume. So the volume is just one additional uh, you know, number, per se, put inside the, the formula. And that is the height of the object. So this formula is this with the h and that makes it the volume and i'm going to erase that because i don't want it to confuse my next group of students but it's it's the same formula except for you're putting in an h all right just so you get the idea so now it's volume because it's pi which isn't what makes it the volume because that's just a constant, but it's the meters, because you're, you're taking the radius and squaring it. So it's meters times meters times meters, because you're looking at this squared, and then times the height, times the pi value, or the constant. So you can use your calculator to do this, all right? So you can use a calculator to generate values. So you go ahead and do pi. By the way, pi is found on your calculator, by the way. And my uh, try to locate it on your calculator, but it's right here, all right? You can find that right there. So I would hit shift pi, or this guy to get me to that yellow one, right? The shift gets me to all things that are yellow on here. So when I can see the pi is yellow, therefore I have now my pi, all right? 
So now that I have that, I go ahead and hit the times key and do five times five times nine, which is all right here, okay? And that's how you go ahead and do the formula for volume. And so it is, you push enter, and that you get the answer that's located right here. Okay, it's 706.9 cubic meters. And that's exactly how you say it. the volume of the units in the oil tank are cubic meters because there are three factors that have meters as units. The two that you have to square, and then the one, the height. All right, now there's other things that are in here, like this one right here. I, I go ahead and get to you. Now, of course, you're going to hopefully write this down, but the volume of a sphere, all right, volume of a sphere, you want to write that one down. It's four times pi times radius cubed, all right, and that's where the, the volume comes in, and then all divided by three. Now, this sum would go ahead and give you the volume of a cube or volume of a sphere, excuse me, is written this way. And I say, don't do it this way, do it this way. It's just easier to put all this associated to the numerator. So, but anyway, that this wasn't really asking us to go too far into this. It's just really asking us to, well, this asks us to calculate doesn't identify, it doesn't ask us to identify that it's uh, the volume of a sphere. I wanted you to have that for your notes. So I, I give that to you and I'm stalling a little bit so you can have time to write that down. Okay, so I've been told by uh, 2106 instructors, that's your next class. I've never had seemingly uh, any issues with it, but there are quite a few people who have issues with recalling these formulas and recalling the use of these formulas and how to use them and I I think personally it's just a matter of plug and chug but the thing is do you understand what r squared means do you not know that it means to take whatever it is you have for the radius and multiply it against itself I mean so those are the kinds of things that maybe perhaps could stop somebody from understanding how to complete this because you can see that it's a very calculator dependent process. It's not as though it's hard to do. You just need to go ahead and properly and put the values. It's called plug in. That's why people say plug and shrug. And shrug means to calculate it, you know, put it into the calculator and let this calculator do its job. You got to know how to use your calculator. All right, now this doesn't go much further than what was just described here. All right, I mean, it, it, this is just a bunch of you know, stuff that's talking about you know, equivalent values and being able to compute and evaluate and such. So it, we're gonna look at that now through Alex, okay? So that's the book. I know you guys love the book. All right, let me go ahead and get started here. All right. All right, so you have your Alex program. All right, let's see if I can get here. All right, let's go to lesson two, three. Okay, so now it says find the area of the shaded figure. Now, I think you know how to multiply three times two. <laughs> In my opinion, this is insulting a little bit. I'm sorry to say, but all it is is one, two, three times two. So, you know, it's three times two. All right. 
And so now this is 8 times 12 for 96. And if you don't know, you can just go ahead and multiply using your calculators, right? I mean, not a big deal, no shame in all of that. So this is going to be 3 times 2, all right, which is 6, times 2, or 12. And it's cubic meters. They've already indicated that for us, which we don't have to put in, which is good, which is nice. Again, if there's something that's a little alarming to you, let me know. All right, that you know you're a little bit frustrated. I'm going too fast, all that kind of stuff. I mean, please slow me down if I'm going too fast for you. Now, this simply is nine times two times eight. Very simple process there. There's no, you don't have to think or anything. You just got to know how to punch it in. Make sure you push the right keys, right? So you get 144, and that's your answer. I mean, to me, this is why I find it very um, concerning that students don't know how to do volume or area. All it is is multiplying, and that's it. If you only have two numbers, you multiply two numbers. If you have three numbers, you multiply three numbers. I mean, here you have one, two, three, four, five. All right, so I'm going to punch in 5 in my calculator times 2 times, and then I'm looking at 1, or one 2, 3, 4, four, four blocks going up. So it's 5 times 2 times 4, or simply 40. All right, I mean, and again, I'm trying to emulate if I was a student and I needed, uh, I didn't know my multiplication, so I could have done that all mentally, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to emulate. If I was a student who didn't know my multiplication is too easy. All right. Now, find the area of the rectangle. So, find the area again is 9 times 12. All right. And if you don't know what 9 times 12 is, you can just punch it in your calculator, right? You could, but you get 108. I mean, that's my only concern if I go too fast is that I know what 9 times 12 is, but not every student does. Like, I know this is 125. I'm done. I mean, I know that answer. I mean, but does common student know that perhaps not so they would have to use your calculator so five times five times five so now this one is what gets students this one sticks students big time so i'm going to slow down a little bit on this one All right, let me. All right, I'm going to go ahead and now work on this. So it's find the exact area and the circumference of a circle. Now, area of a circle is founded by the formula of pi r squared. That is the formula for finding area of a circle. All right. Now, it says find the exact area. So now, finding the exact area means they want to use the value of pi. They don't want the approximation of pi of 3.14, they want pi. So all you have to do is take five 
and insert it into the R. And so while, yes, you can write it this way, it's more appropriate since we're not converting the pi, or the pi into 3.14 approximately, then we're going to go ahead and take the uh, 5 and square it, get 25, and leave the pi alone as it is. So that's the answer they're looking for is 25 pi. That's why they give us these symbols over here, right? So now let's take a look at the exact circumference. Now circumference is, there's two formulas for circumference. There is diameter times pi, or there's two times the radius times pi. And since we're given the radius here, and now this is the thing you need to know about radius. Radius is only head distance from the center to the edge of a circle. The diameter is from the edge of the circle going through the center and going to the other edge of the circle, so the other side of the circle. So that is the diameter. It's the length all the way across the entire circle going through the center of the circle. So we're not given the diameter. That's why we're given these two formulas for the circumference. So now I would go ahead and plug in then the radius being um, five, I would say two times five times pi. And because we're dealing with the exact value and not the approximational value, we're not going to approximate pi to 3.14. We're just going to leave it as pi symbol. So that's what we need to concentrate on. Uh, and that's the difference between exact and not exact. Um, exact because pi is approximately 3.14. And if you can't remember that, you can take any calculator and hit shift pi symbol and hit enter. And there's the value of pi. All right. That's, that's a way to do it. All right. Is to get it so you know what pi is. And if you can't remember it. Now, here's the thing is that we need to go ahead and take that value and multiply it against 25 to find the approximate area. So I'm going to multiply that times 25. And then it says round to the nearest hundredth. Well, hundredth, this is the you know tens, ones, and then you have tenths and then hundredths. There's no such thing as once. All right, so this is tenths hundreds and so that it, that means we have 78.54 and we got to remember all right to oh by the way i have failed to put in i've been concentrating so much on the numbers itself that i've been forgetting to put in when we're dealing with area it's feet squared we would have gotten it wrong if i didn't include these by the way please be sure to put in feet squared and then for this, for this one, it's just going to be feet because it's circumference. It's the perimeter around the circle. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take, and watch this, I'm going to take 10, and I'm going to multiply it against pi, and look at that. 10 pi is what you see up here. And I'm going to go ahead and put in 31.42. All right, and then I'm going to make sure to put in only but feet for the circumference. Had these been reversed, because th sometimes they put the circumference first and then the area, then I would have been only putting feet on this side versus this side. So in other words, just be careful with how it's set up. Don't always think, oh, it's, this one's going to be the feet squared, and this one's going to be the, just the normal feet. Depends on where the circumference is and where the area is within the problem. All right, I think as, as, as articulate as I could be in that problem to give you clarity and understanding about how to approach it. All right, now I'm going to go a little faster, okay? A little faster. So this is, this is right here, the diameter. Since it's diameter, 
half the diameter is three because that gives me back to the radius. So then doing this, I'm gonna get three squared because it's half the diameter is three, by the way. I mean, I maybe I should write that down. I mean, I don't know how many students can't remember what I say. That's the problem. So I'm gonna have to write it down. So half the radius, or excuse me, half the diameter is the radius is three yards. Okay. So now I've I've written it where the radius is indicated. Now I can do this. R is the radius, so it's three squared is nine pi. So I'm I'm putting that in there then. Nine pi. And then this is yards squared because it's area. Circumference is going to be the six. See how you have the six there? It's already on the picture. But I'm going to use this one. And then the, the circumference is going to be six pi. So I'm going to put six pi. And because it's the circumference, it's going to be just yards. Now I can just use my calculator to do the rest of it for me. So nine times pi, and then I'm gonna get that number. So I have 28.27, and then that's going to be yards. It's gonna be yards squared, exactly like this. And then six times pi, and that gives me 18.85. And that's going to be yards. All right. Are there any questions on that? Because that'll be the last one I do with that one. All right. Please, if you have any questions, let me know. All right. Now the sphere. Remember what I put before. I told you to write it down. It's Here's the formula for it. All right, I know the formula. If you don't know the formula, you can look at the geometric figure, or, you know, formulas here if you need to. All right, now that's the looking at the volume. So now to fill in these pieces, this is going to be um, one value just needs to be replaced. And that is the R needs to be replaced with 8.1 cubed. So to do this, watch this. You're going to get upset if you don't have this calculator because watch this. I'm just going to type it in. Three times pi, or four times pi, excuse me, times uh, the 8.1. So I put in, punched in 8.1 raised to the power of three. All right. And then all divided by three because that's part of the formula, see. So I just did all that, and now I hit enter, and there's my answer. So 2226, two, and it's asking us to round to the nearest hundredth, so that's going to be 0, 9. And that is volume, so that's going to be meters, millimeters cubed. So, yeah, it's, it's like that. I know it's upsetting if you don't have this calculator. It's so beautiful having this calculator punching it in like that and then just let the calculator do its thing. So the volume of your is not complicated. It is just you're going to you're allowed an index card for your test. So you would have that written down and perhaps this would be maybe an example you'd write down if you're not comfortable with sphere. But you need to just do a couple of these problems in order to feel comfortable with it. And by the way, the way I show you how to write it down is more efficient than looking at the way they show you how to do it. Here's what they're going to um, have. Look at this. This is the way they're going to write the sphere, the volume of sphere formula. Not the way I did it, but the way they did it. Look at that. There's a difference. And it makes you feel a little uncomfortable because then you have, oh my goodness, I have to go ahead and multiply by four thirds and it, it starts to turn into a, a little bit more work and it's people and students don't like it. They don't feel comfortable with it. 
and I just jacked that up. Um, I thought I was getting out of it, but I didn't. All right, I'll just bounce back to that question. Sorry about that. I thought I was exiting the formula sheet. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm just getting back to where we were. All right, now um, this is the cylinders equation, okay? So this one's a little different as well. So you're getting more comfortable or you're trying to get more comfortable with the idea on how to operate your um your calculators all right so now with the cylinder again this is this is the formula for it so we're looking at the exact volume so it's pi r squared just like a, for, um the formula for the area of a circle times its height so then in this case because it is two feet there is two feet and it's 18 feet, then the formula would be pi times two, the radius squared times 18. And I would just go ahead and put that in my calculator. So pi times two squared, by the way, I know that's hard to see, I apologize, times, and then 18. So I'm just going ahead and just dropping that son of a gun right into my calculator. But then, darn it, they want me to go ahead and put it in terms of pi. All right. So that means that this is the answer to the second one. So I'm going to put that answer in. So 226, and they want us to round to the nearest hundred. So that would be 0 0.19. And then because we're dealing with um, feet, then we were going to be dealing with volume of cubic feet. Now, the thing is, is to get the exact value, because it doesn't do that, all I got to do is take 4 and multiply it against 18. That's what we need to do in order to get where it's 72, and then we could throw in the pi symbol. And that's, again, cubic feet. So do not go ahead and drop, just drop the whole entire thing in the calculator because it's not going to, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, okay. You hit the S to D button. Okay. In this case, I didn't even realize you can hit S D to button and S to D would make it go from the decimal to the standard form, which is the 72 pi in this calculator. If you're using this calculator, which is really nice. All right. So. That is that, and I'm going to check it, and I got it correct. So, so now you're looking at volume of a uh, rectangular prism, uh, and the volume of a rectangular prism, uh, area of, of, of the rectangle, and then that's also dealing with squares. You have area and volume of squares and cubes, and then now we're dealing with cylinders and spheres. So, an area of a circle. So, and the circumference as well. So there's a lot of stuff we did today. There's a lot of formulas right there. I mean, if you think about all the different formulas we went through, all right? I'm proud to say that you guys have done all that. Now, the formulas that I haven't gone and written down, which I did earlier in other parts, was length times width for the back, and then uh, volume is length times width times height. So now I have them all written right here for you. I mean, I've, I've gotten them all written in with a couple of examples in there. All right. So that's the, the heart of everything we need to go over today. All right. The rest of it is just going to be repeating. So now we're looking at a sphere again. All right. That would be, again, just dropping it into the calculator. Do you guys want me to show you how to drop in the calculator again? So it's just getting used to this, right? I know it's early, so 
If you need me to, I, I'll gladly do it. I mean, you know what? I'm, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cheat on you guys. What I'm going to do is I'm going to push up, and I'm going to push over, 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 over. I'm going to go ahead and change this right here. I'm going to hit the delete button, seven, hit over, delete the one, and hit nine. Look at that. I, I, I already answered it now. <laughs> I know you're probably upset. Wow, you're like, wow, that was so easy if I just had it in my calculator first. And that is true. It's nice when it's already in your calculator and you push the, uh, the toggle button up. So I can go ahead and put in the answer. And around all 10 years, 100 would be 24 cubic meters. All right, we're almost done here. Just giving you more practice, right? This is a sphere again. This is the diameter. You got a half that. So that's going to be 6.3. So you would go ahead and just drop it into here just by going ahead and pushing the back button. All right, I'm not going to do it again because that's just ridiculous. I don't need to push 6.3 in there and give you an answer. That's not learning. That's just me doing the work. But that was a critical thing. You had to understand that you can't deal with the diameter, dealing with the uh, you know sphere, and you can't deal with uh, the diameter when it comes to the cylinder either. You have to half that, so that's going to be four. So it'd be four squared is sixteen times twelve, and that's what you'd put here times pi. All right, so that's just nothing but the formula. Just take care of the formula, will take care of you. As long as you understand that you're dealing with um, what information you're given is not the radius, but the diameter. Because if you drop in that eight squared, then you're screwed. You just use the diameter and you're going to get it wrong. And then you're going to be like, oh, I understand how to do this, but what's going on? Why did that happen to me? Why am I getting it wrong? Now here it says, Lena is staining wood floor um, of a court, right? Wood floor of a court. The court is the shape of a rectangle. Its length is 51 feet and the width is 32 feet. Suppose each can of wood stain covers 102 square feet. How many cans would she need to cover the court? So to do this problem right here, all right, to do this problem right here, this is a matter of multiplying and then basically uh, dividing. So what, we, what we're multiplying is the 51 times 32. So 50, excuse me, I gotta get out of here. 51 times 52, or 32, excuse me, is equal to 1,632. Then you divide it by the 102, because that's how much each can is covering so magically for this particular problem it's perfect where all you need is exactly 16 cans of of paint i mean that's uh very convenient and in the real world doesn't normally happen because i know personally as a painter i sometimes paint very thick like i like to have a thick coating and some people don't like that well, stain is a little different because you don't want it to be too thick because it'll be sticky and tacky. So anyway, enough of that conversation. But that's how you do it. You just multiply and divide. All right, and the same thing goes for this. It says Dan is fertilizing a garden. The length is 12 feet. So you do 12 times 10 feet and then the bag of fertilizer covers 30 square feet. How many bags will the, they need to cover the garden? So you divide it by 30, and that's perfectly given at four bags. All right. And that concludes this conversation regarding the from another dimension, and that is, again, 2-3. Are there any questions? Well, in that regard, then, no questions being asked. And I'm assuming you take full responsibility for all 
uh, corresponding content. And it was nice working with you guys.